Georges Pierre Seurat was a French post impressionist painter and draftsman. He is noted for his innovative use of drawing media and for devising the painting techniques known as chromoluminarism and pointillism. His large scale work, A Sunday Afternoon on the Island of La Grande Jatte, altered the direction of modern art by initiating neo impressionism, and is one of the icons of late 19th century painting. Biography Family and Education Seurat was born December 2, 1859, in Paris, at 60 Rue de Bondy. The Seurat family moved to 136 Boulevard de Magenta in 1862 or 1863. His father, Antoine Chrysostome Seurat, originally from Champagne, was a former legal official who had become wealthy from speculating in property, and his mother, Ernestine Fifer, was from Paris. Georges had a brother, a Permel Mile Augustin, and his sister, Marie Beard, both older. His father lived in Laurency and visited his wife and children once a week at Boulevard de Magenta. Georges Seurat first studied art at the École Municipale de Sculpture et Dessin, near his family's home in the Boulevard Magenta, which was run by the sculptor Justin Lequin. In 1878 he moved on to the A. Permel Col des Beaux Arts where he was taught by Henri Lehmann, and followed a conventional academic training drawing from casts of antique sculpture and copying drawings by old masters. Seurat's studies resulted in a well-considered and fertile theory of contrasts, a theory to which all his work was thereafter subjected. His formal artistic education came to an end in November 1879, when he left the A. Permil Col des Beaux Arts for a year of military service. After a year at the Brest Military Academy, he returned to Paris where he shared a studio with his friend Armin Jean, while also renting a small apartment at 16 Rue de Chabrol. For the next two years, he worked at mastering the art of monochrome drawing. His first exhibited work, shown at the Salon, of 1883, was a counter copyright crayon drawing of Amon Jean. He also studied the works of Delacroix carefully, making notes on his use of color. Bathers at Asnia Res, he spent 1883 working on his first major painting, the Euro, a large canvas titled Bathers at Asnia Res, a monumental work showing young men relaxing by the Seine in a working class suburb of Paris. Although influenced in its use of color and light tone by Impressionism, the painting, with its smooth, simplified textures and carefully outlined, rather sculptural figures, showed the continuing impact of his neoclassical training. The critic Paul Alexis described it as a faux puvis de chevans. Seurat also departed from the Impressionist ideal by preparing for the work with a number of drawings and oil sketches before starting on the canvas in his studio. Bathers at Asnia Res was rejected by the Paris Salon, and instead he showed it at the Groupe des Artistes in the copyright pendants in May 1884. Soon, however, disillusioned by the poor organization of the Inde copyright pendants, Seurat and some other artists he had met through the group a Euro including Charles Angrand, Henri Edmond Cross, Albert Dubois Pillet and Paul Signoc a Euro set up a new organization, the Socia Copyright Tar Copyright des Artistes in de Copyright Pendants. Seurat's new ideas on pointillism were to have an especially strong influence on Signoc, who subsequently painted in the same idiom. A Sunday Afternoon on the Island of La Grande Jatte in the summer of 1884, Seurat began work on a Sunday afternoon on the island of La Grande Jatte, which took him two years to complete. The painting shows members of each of the social classes participating in various park activities. The tiny juxtaposed dots of multicolored paint allow the viewer's eye to blend colors optically, rather than having the colors physically blended on the canvas. It took Seurat two years to complete this ten-foot-wide painting, much of which he spent in the park sketching in preparation for the work. It is now in the permanent collection of the Art Institute of Chicago. Seurat made several studies for the large painting including a smaller version, Study for a Sunday Afternoon on the Island of La Grande Jatte, now in the collection of the Metropolitan Museum of Art, in New York City. The painting was the inspiration for Stephen Sondheim's musical, Sunday in the Park with George. Later career. Seurat concealed his relationship with Madeleine Knobloch, an artist's model whom he portrayed in his painting June Femme Se Powdrant. 
In 1889 she moved in with Surratt in his studio on the seventh floor of 128 Bis Boulevard de Clichy. When Madeleine became pregnant, the couple moved to a studio at 39 Passage de la Permille Les a Copyright et des Beaux Arts. There she gave birth to their son, who was named Pierre Georges, February 16, 1890. Surratt spent the summer of 1890 on the coast at Gravelines, where he painted four canvases including the Channel of Gravelines, Petit Fort Philippe, as well as eight oil panels and made a few drawings. Death Surratt died in Paris in his parents' home on March 29, 1891 at the age of 31. The cause of his death is uncertain, and has been variously attributed to a form of meningitis, pneumonia, infectious angina, and diphtheria. His son died two weeks later from the same disease. His last ambitious work, The Circus, was left unfinished at the time of his death. March 30, 1891 A commemorative service was held in the Church of St. Vincent de Paul. Surratt was interred March 31, 1891 at Samisha Redou Paris Laches. At the time of Surratt's death Madeleine was pregnant with a second child who died during or shortly after birth. Color Theory Contemporary Ideas During the 19th century, scientist writers such as Michel Eugenie Chevrel, Ogden Rood and David Sutter wrote treatises on color, optical effects and perception. They adapted the scientific research of Hermann von Helmholtz and Isaac Newton into a form accessible to lay people. Artists followed new discoveries in perception with great interest. Chevrel was perhaps the most important influence on artists at the time. His great contribution was producing a color wheel of primary and intermediary hues. Chevrel was a French chemist who restored tapestries. During his restorations he noticed that the only way to restore a section properly was to take into account the influence of the colors around the missing wooler. He could not produce the right hue unless he recognized the surrounding dyes. Chevrel discovered that two colors juxtaposed, slightly overlapping or very close together would have the effect of another color when seen from a distance. The discovery of this phenomenon became the basis for the pointillist technique of the neo-impressionist painters. Chevrel also realized that the halo that one sees after looking at a color is the opposing color. For example, after looking at a red object, one may see a cyan echo halo of the original object. This complementary color is due to retinal persistence. Neo-impressionist painters interested in the interplay of colors made extensive use of complementary colors in their paintings. In his works, Chevrel advised artists to think and paint not just the color of the central object, but to add colors and make appropriate adjustments to achieve a harmony among colors. It seems that the harmony Chevrel wrote about is what Surratt came to call emotion. It is not clear whether Surratt read all of Chevrel's book on color contrast, published in 1859, but he did copy out several paragraphs from the chapter on painting, and he had read Charles Blanc's Grammaire des Arts du Dessin, which cites Chevrel's work. Blanc's book was directed at artists and art connoisseurs. Because of color's emotional significance to him, he made explicit recommendations that were close to the theories later adopted by the Neo-Impressionists. He said that color should not be based on the judgment of taste but rather it should be close to what we experience in reality. Blank did not want artists to use equal intensities of color, but to consciously plan and understand the role of each hue in creating a whole. While Chevrel based his theories on Newton's thoughts on the mixing of light, Ogden Rood based his writings on the work of Helmholtz. He analyzed the effects of mixing and juxtaposing material pigments. Rood valued as primary colors red, green, and blue-violet. Like Chevrel, he said that if two colors are placed next to each other, from a distance they look like a third distinctive color. He also pointed out that the juxtaposition of primary hues next to each other would create a far more intense and pleasing color, when perceived by the eye and mind, than the corresponding color made simply by mixing paint. Rude advised artists to be aware of the difference between additive and subtractive qualities of color, since material pigments and optical pigments do not mix in the same way, material pigments, red plus yellow plus blue equals black, optical slash light to red plus green plus blue equals white, Surratt was also influenced by Sutter's phenomena of vision, 
in which he wrote that the laws of harmony can be learned as one learns the laws of harmony and music. He heard lectures in the 1880s by the mathematician Charles Henry at the Sorbonne, who discussed the emotional properties and symbolic meaning of lines and color. Henry's ideas were quickly adopted by Seurat. Science and emotion, Seurat took to heart the color theorist's notion of a scientific approach to painting. He believed that a painter could use color to create harmony and emotion in art in the same way that a musician uses counterpoint and variation to create harmony in music. He theorized that the scientific application of color was like any other natural law, and he was driven to prove this conjecture. He thought that the knowledge of perception and optical laws could be used to create a new language of art based on its own set of heuristics and he set out to show this language using lines, color intensity and color schema. Surat called this language chromoluminarism. In a letter to Morris Bieberg in 1890 he wrote Art is Harmony. Harmony is the analogy of the contrary and of similar elements of tone, of color and of line, considered according to their dominance and under the influence of light, in gay, calm or sad combinations. Surat's theories can be summarized as follows, the emotion of gaiety can be achieved by the domination of luminous hues, by the predominance of warm colors, and by the use of lines directed upward. Calm is achieved through an equivalence balance of the use of the light and the dark, by the balance of warm and cold colors, and by lines that are horizontal. Sadness is achieved by using dark and cold colors and by lines pointing downward. Influence, where the dialectic nature of Paul Carr copyright Zand's work had been greatly influential during the highly expressionistic phase of proto-cubism, between 1908 and 1910, the work of Surratt, with its flatter, more linear structures, would capture the attention of the cubists from 1911. With the advent of monochromatic cubism in 1910 to 1911, writes art historian Robert Herbert, questions of form displaced color in the artist's attention, and for these Surat was more relevant. Thanks to several exhibitions, his paintings and drawings were easily seen in Paris, and reproductions of his major compositions circulated widely among the cubists. The Shahat, Ridges Museum Cra Paragraph Lair Mar One Quarter Lair, Othello was called by Andra Copyright Salmon one of the great icons of the new devotion, and both it and the Cirque, Musa Copyright d'Orsay, Paris, according to Guillaume Apollinaire, almost belong to synthetic cubism. The concept was well established among the French artists that painting could be expressed mathematically, in terms of both color and form. And this mathematical expression resulted in an independent and compelling objective truth, perhaps more so than the objective truth of the object represented. Indeed, the Neo-Impressionists had succeeded in establishing an objective scientific basis in the domain of color. Soon, the Cubists were to do so in both the domain of form and dynamics, Orphism would do so with color too. Gallery Exhibitions From 1883 until his death, Surratt exhibited his work at the Salon, the Salon des Indes Copyright Pendants, Les Twenty in Brussels, the Eighth Impressionist Exhibition, and various other exhibitions in France and abroad. Salon, Paris, 1 Maya Euro June 20, 1883, the Salon showed Surratt's drawing of Edmond Amandine. Salon des Indes Copyright Pendants, Paris, 15 Maya Euro June 30, 1884, Surratt showed Une Bagnade, Asnia Res, after the official Salon had rejected it. Surratt's debut as a painter. Salon des Indes Copyright Pendants, Paris, December 10, 1884 Euro January 17, 1885, works in oil and pastel by the Impressionists of Paris, American Art Association, New York, April and May 1886. Organized by Paul Durand and Ruel. Impressionist Exhibition, Paris, 15 Mile Euro June 15, 1886 on Dimanche April S. Midia L.A. La de la Grande Jat shown for the first time. Salon des Indes Copyright Pendants, Paris, 21 Augusta Euro September 21, 1886, Les Impressionists, Palais du Cower Saint Andrew Copyright, Nantes, October 10, 1886 Euro January 15, 1887, Gallery Martinet, Paris, December 1886 Euro January 1887, Les 20, Brussels, February 1887, 
Salon des Inde Copyright Pendants, Paris, 26 March a Euro May 3, 1887, Thal Centre Paris, November 1887 a Euro January 1888, works by Serrat, Signoc and Van Gogh. Exposition de Janvier, La Revue in de Copyright Pendanti, Paris, January 1888, Exposition de Far Copyright Via, La Revue in de Copyright Pendanti, Paris, February 1888, Hartel Druot, Paris, 1 Euro March 3, 1888, Salon des Indes de Copyright Pendants, Paris, 22 March Euro May 3, 1888, Tweed Jarlage Tentoon Stelling der Needle and Shirts Club, RTA Amir Amsterdam, June 1888, Drawing or Cafar Copyright Concert, lent by Theo van Gogh. Les 20, Brussels, February 1889. Salon des Indes Copyright Pendants, Paris, 3 September Euro October 4, 1889. Salon des Indes Copyright Pendants, Paris, 20 March Euro April 27, 1890. Chaudlis Chahat, June Femme Se Powdrant and nine other works. Les 20, Brussels, 7 February Euro March 8, 1891. Chaudlis Chahat and six other paintings. Salon des Indes Copyright Pendants, Paris. 20 March Euro April 27, 1891, showed Le Cirque and four paintings from Gravelines. Source, see also. History of painting, references, notes. Sources, Georges Serrat, 1859-1891. New York, Metropolitan Museum of Art 1991. ISBN 9780870996184. Joren, Mariek. Baldink, Suzanne. Berger, Hellwise. Surratt. Kra Paragraph Lair Ma One Quarter Lair Museum. ISBN A 9789073313293. Further reading, Kachin, Fina Section Oise, Surratt, Le Rave de la Euro Unregistered Trademark Art Science, Paris, Gallimard Ra Copyright Union des Musées Copyrights National, 1991, Everdell, William of the First Moderns. Chicago, University of Chicago Press. ISBN A 0 226 22480 5 Far Copyright Na Copyright On, Far Copyright Licks, Ovis Plus K Completes, ed. J. U. L. Perrin, 2 v. Geneva, Dross, 1970, Gage, John T., A Euro OE The Technique of Serrat, A Reappraisal, A Euro Art Bulletin 69 3, Hal Perrin, Joan Ungesma, Far Copyright Licks Far Copyright Na Copyright On, Aesthet and Anarchist and Finder Sayaka Paris, New Haven, Connecticut, Yale UP, 1988, Homer, William Innes, Surratt and the Science of Painting, Cambridge, Massachusetts, MIT Press. 1964, La Paragraphe EGREN, Sven, The Genesis of Modernism, Surratt, Gauguin, Van Gogh and French Symbolism in the 1880s, Second Ed. Bloomington, Indiana, Indiana University Press, 1971, Old, John, Car Copyright Zan, New Ed, N.Y., Abrams, 1986, Old, Surratt, N.Y., Abrams, 1990, Old, Studies in Impressionism, N.Y., Harry N. Abrams, 1986, Old, Post-Impressionism, 3rd Ed, Revised, N.Y., Museum of Modern Art, 1978, Old, Studies in Post-Impressionism, N.Y., Harry N. Abrams, 1986, Rich, Daniel Catlin, Surratt and the Evolution of La Grange at, N.Y., Greenwood. Press, 1969, Russell, John, Surratt, London, Thames and Hudson, 1985, Surratt, Georges, Surratt, Correspondences, Tar Copyright Moynages, Notes in a Copyright Dites, Critiques, ed. Ha Copyright Lunny Sierra S. Paris, Acropole, 1991, Surratt, ed. Norma Brood, Surratt in Perspective, Englewood Cliffs, New Jersey, Prentice Hall, 1978, External Links, George Surratt, Biography, Style and Artworks, 106 Works by Georges Pierre Surratt, Port N. Bessin, 
entrance to the harbour in the Moman Online Collection, George Surratt, the drawings in the Moman Online Collection.